This is one of my favorites. The dot cells technique is super powerful, but can be a little bit confusing. So in this video series, we're gonna work through four steps to get you understanding and using dot cells in your coding. The first step is selecting a single cell, nice and easy using dot cells. Then we're gonna look at the concept of the anchor cell in the dot cells technique, a really important aspect. Then we're gonna look at how to take values from the spreadsheet to define the range selected using dot cells. And finally, we're gonna look at how to select a range of cells, not just a single cell, using dot cells. When you work through these four steps, if you can master them, you'll be able to use dot cells in your coding. It's super powerful. I know you're going to love it. So let's get into the file. And our first job, our first step is just to select a single cell using dot cells. So let's get the VBA editor open, develop tab, visual basic. I've got nothing in the VBA editor at the moment. I'm going to insert a module. When we insert a module, it's good practice for us to type in option explicit. And now we're ready to create our first routine. I'm gonna call it simple select because it's simple, the first thing that we're doing. So it's an informative name for the routine. Now, in order to understand dot cells, we've got to get used to Excel using numbers to refer to cells, using numbers to refer to rows, numbers to refer to columns. Now, maybe intuitively, it kind of makes sense for rows, and let's just prove this by typing in a row formula, opening and closing the bracket. We can see Excel knows that what row the row number is, and we're in row eight there. We can prove that using the row formula. Less intuitive is refer referring rather to columns using uh, VBA and Excel using a formula to refer to the column number. But by typing in the column formula there, we can see Excel also refers to columns using numbers too. So we're gonna harness that using dot cells to get things done. What's the syntax? Very simple, certainly to begin with. We're gonna say cells and then two numbers. The first number is the number of rows down. Second number is the number of columns across. And remember, a higher number means down if we're talking about rows and a higher number means further across to the right, to your right, if we're talking about columns. We want to select, let's just say cell B8 first. So I'm gonna say cells B8, well it's eight rows down and then it's two columns across and then dot select. So nice and simple. Let's play the routine. Uh, let's see what happens. Just gonna hit the play button at the top here. We can see that B8 is selected. I'm gonna select another cell, play the routine again. We can see that B8 is selected there. Now, that's our first little job done. Let's quickly play with this code just to develop an understanding of what's going on. Try changing some of the values. We're now going to row 10. Try changing the second value. We should now go to cell D10. This is a really important part of learning code, playing with the code. Does it do what you expect it to do? So this is our starting point, where we haven't introduced the idea of the anchor cell. It's our second critical idea when we're thinking about dot cells. Now Excel does assume an anchor cell even if we don't say one. If we don't specify the anchor cell, Excel is gonna take the top left corner of the spreadsheet as the anchor point. And let's just, let's just prove that here. Let's say range A1 and use A1 as our anchor point. And I'm just gonna say dot cells one one. So when I run this code, what cell do you think is going to be selected? If we were using offset here, then range B2, cell B2 would be selected. It's slightly different when we use cells though. If we say one one, it's actually going to just leave us on that anchor cell. That anchor cell is included in the reference range. Let's demonstrate that, play the code. We can see that A1 is selected. And let's again, just experiment. So now I'm gonna go three rows down. What cell is gonna be selected now? Well, A3 is gonna be selected. Now let's try moving that anchor point. So let's go to A, in fact, let's go to B8. So the first cell in our highlighted range here, B8. 
and then I'm going to change this back to one. What cell is going to be selected now? Well, B8 is our anchor point. I know that's included in the reference range. So 1-1 one, one leaves us in the same place, leaves us on the anchor point. So I'm just going to play the code. And yes, we're in B8. So what happens if I change this to 2-2? Two, two? Well, now we're going to go one cell down, one cell across. So this is going to take us, I think, to C9. I'm just going to select a different cell. So when I play the code, we should find ourselves back in cell C9. So that's your introduction to the dot cells technique. Hopefully you can see beginning to get a feel for the power, but hopefully you've just been able to use those basic ideas. So how many rows down, how many columns across, then introducing the idea of an anchor point to, then just play with some different ideas, change that anchor point, change that the, the row index, change the cell index. What happens, that idea of play, just playing around with things and understanding what's going on. That's super important when you're learning code. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.